What's happening, Titan fam? We've got an incredible build for you on today's show. Tons of upgrade options and some really great features. This is our classic 170. Let's check it out. Our classic 170 build is like nothing else on the market. It's our hyper modular design with lots of plug and play components that allow you to customize your van or mix and match those upgrades to make sure the van meets your needs or for your specific trip. This one is our classic 170. It's on the Sprinter 170 chassis and this particular van has the three liter diesel engine, but we can do this build on a gas model as well. Some of the plug and play components include all of our seating, a kitchen, overhead cabinets, and a second tier bed platform. Now we have lots of other upgrade options on this van as well. Some of the bumpers, steps, winches, racks, and awnings, those are available on all of our builds. We'll be going into detail on these packages and more. We'll start up in the front of the vehicle and work our way to the back. Lighting is super important on a van build, and this van has pretty much every option you can get. Now you don't have to go this extreme with your lighting, but it's worth considering a handful of these different options. Ditch lights are a great simple lighting addition that helps to see those sort of peripheral views when you're going down a backcountry road or four x four. These are from Baja Design and they're a great addition if you're just looking for a little bit of extra light. Now, if you're looking for a little bit more light for the front end of your vehicle, look no further than the LP6 by Baja Design. This van is equipped with both the amber driving combo as well as the white driving combo. This setup is mounted to our bull bar on our lower bumper, but we also offer a floating LP6 grill setup that has just two LP6s that come right off the grill. So you don't have to have the bumper just to have lights up front. We have a couple of different options depending on what you're looking for. If you do happen to add a bumper, we definitely recommend adding some lights up front because it can make a big difference for those nighttime rides and especially if you're going to be going off-road to make sure you can see any sort of wildlife or obstacles that might be in your way. If you're looking for some extra lighting up front, we also have some rooftop options. This van is equipped with six Baja Design LP6s mounted to an Illumines Touring roof rack. We have a combination of spotlights and floods, which gives a really nice 180 degree spread for that lighting from the roof rack. Now we also offer a 50 inch bar light that can be mounted to a roof rack or without. So depending on what you're looking for and how many lumens you'd like to get, we can really dial it in to meet your specific needs. We also have some perimeter lighting that's mounted to this roof rack that's a great option and we're going to show you that next. The perimeter lighting package adds lights to the side of your vehicle and to the rear. We have two lights on the passenger side, two on the driver, and two on the rear. These are the Baja Design S2 Sport Lights and this is a great package to think about if you find yourself going down the road middle of the night looking for a campsite these will really help to allow you to see off the side of your vehicle. And with the two on the rear, if you're reversing, it'll make sure you have enough light to do it safely. Now to control all these lights, we have a multi-switch kit as well. That's worth considering, especially if you're gonna be doing a lot of lightings like this van has. That's an eight circuit control panel that's mounted right by the steering wheel and allows you to control up to eight different lighting circuits right from that panel. This van actually has the max number of circuits that we typically do, which is eight. And so we have the option to turn on the amber lights up front, the spotlights, two different sets for our overheads, all three of our perimeter lights and the ditch lights. So lots of options there. And again, it's a great thing to consider. If you're gonna be adding a lot of lights, make sure you have that switch kit up front, make it nice and easy and a clean install. Moving on from our lighting, we're gonna talk about some of our off-road upgrade options. On the front of the vehicle, this client opted for the CA tuned hammerhead bumper, as well as the Warren VR Evo 12S winch. Now, both of these are really great options. The hammerhead from CA tuned is one of the few bumpers that's actually sensor compatible. So if your van does come equipped with some of these sensors here, it's one of the few options that's going to not impact those, the functionality of those sensors while still giving you the ability to have some protection up front and some versatility with the addition of a winch. 
The Warren VR12 is a 12,000 pound winch. And you can get some additional pulling power by using some shackles and pulleys. This is the synthetic cable version and we highly recommend always using a synthetic rope and synthetic shock soft shackles for all your linkage needs. Make sure if anything fails, you're not gonna have steel flying around. Winches are incredibly versatile and a really good thing to consider if you're gonna be doing some off-road driving. These will get you out of a pinch so you're not having to call a tow truck out to the middle of nowhere and make sure that you can get you and your friends out of there safely. You can add all the off-road upgrades you want to a van, but if you don't get the right wheels and tires on there, you're really gonna be hurting. These here are the BFG TKO2s, very common and popular tire. Uh, and these here are the Black Rhino Arsenal wheels. The wheels are a little less important. You can keep your factory rims if you want, but the Arsenals are a higher end alloy, so they are gonna be a little bit lighter and get you a little bit better performance. The rubber is really where you're gonna see that performance tick up and having good traction and a good tread pattern is gonna make all the difference. Our wheel and tire upgrade includes all five tires for your vehicle, so that includes your spare. You're gonna get your choice of a alloy rim from Black Rhino, as well as one of two tires. We offer the BFG TKO2s or the Cooper Discover AT3s. Those are both E-rated tires, so those are the proper tires for the weight of these vans. And it's a great upgrade option if you're gonna be hitting the trails. Although the wheels and tires are probably where you're gonna see some of your best traction gains, Getting the right suspension is also critical. We wanna make sure the suspension is right for the weight of the vehicle. These build outs definitely can add some weight, especially if you're gonna be including a lot of gear and equipment on top of that. So we have several different suspension upgrades you can choose from, both from Agile Off-Road or from Van Compass. This van has the Van Compass Stage 4.3. It's a great kit all around. The Falcon shocks that are both in the front and the rear are adjustable, so you have dampening control as well as rebound control. So they're definitely gonna be some of the higher end performers as far as the actual shocks go, but it is an add -a leaf in the back as opposed to a full leaf spring replacement like Agile. So there's pros and cons to both, but they're both a great option to consider if you're thinking about improving your suspension and your ride quality. Even with the best wheel and tire, making sure you have the right pressure is critical depending on the situation. Our onboard air compressor upgrade option is really, really nice and gives you four outputs, one at each tire to allow you to inflate all four simultaneously. Now, the Sprinter has offset pressure on its tire, so it runs about 65 in the front and 75 in the rear, and that will be different depending on what wheel and tire size you get. But to compensate for that, we have a ARB CKMTA12 with a manifold system and dual regulators. So we're actually able to set the pressure for our rear set of outputs different than our front set of outputs. So when you do hit the dirt, you can use the Stans automatic tire deflator, which is included in this kit. You screw those on to the valve stems on each tire, and that's gonna automatically deflate the tires down to your preset pressure. So what I typically do is I'll get out of the vehicle, I'll switch my suspension over if you do have dampening control, and I'll screw those adjustments onto the valve stem and keep on driving. That allows me to air down while I'm in motion so I don't have to sit there and wait for the pressure to get down. On the sprinters, you can monitor your air pressure on your tires directly from the dash. So once I see that my pressure is where I want it, I'll stop and take those off. I, I don't like to leave them on just because if uh, they do have a little bit of an air leak on them, then you could end up with a flat tire before you know it. So it's always best to just get them off of there once you do have that tire pressure down. After you're done driving on the trails and you get back to pavement, you're gonna need the air back up. With our kit, we include four air lines that will go into each one of the chucks, so one at each tire. When you flip the switch, you'll be able to automatically air up your front tires and rear tires all simultaneously, but to different pressures based on how you set your regulators. We timed going from 35 PSI on all four tires back up to our 6575 and took only nine minutes to get us back up there. So if you've ever 
inflated tires before you know going around and doing each one can be a little tedious and then you're checking pressures off and on so this kit takes all the hassle out of it and makes it a really easy option to get aired down and aired back up to make the most of your off-road driving the two main reasons to air down are going to be for ride comfort and for traction so even if it's not a crazy gnarly road and you're just going to be going down some washboards airing down from that 65 75 to 35 psi is going to really tame that road out and make it much smoother as you go down so you're not getting rattled around in the vehicle the second thing it does is give you a lot more traction so you're going to get a lot better performance when you are going off-road especially if it's getting into a little bit hairier terrain so no matter what the reason is it's a really great upgrade and one worth considering so now here you see we have quite a few different accessories installed on the back of this van. We have our 30 inch rear cargo box mounted onto a B2 carrier from Owl Vans. Up top here, we have our one up tray so we can store up to two bikes above our box and that's why it's called a B2 for box and bikes. But there's also options to do a Sherpa on this side or some of the different backpack options from a Lumines. Here on the driver's side, this client opted for our rear tire and ladder combo. So there's a ladder that allows access up to the back of the roof rack, as well as moving the spare tire out from underneath the van up to the back. Now this tire will fit underneath if you don't want to move it to the back. These are 275 70 R17s and we do have the ability to modify the spare tire cage to make sure that that tire will fit without any issues but a lot of people do like moving it to the back here to make it even easier if you have a flat and need to swap it out. There's also options for this back door here to add boxes or the Sherpa for recovery equipment, including additional fuel, max tracks, high lift jacks, etc. So lots of options here on the back doors, and this is really another great place to be able to customize to make sure you get everything you need and have the equipment where you want it on your van. While the backdoor ladder is a great option, that first rung height is quite tall. A side mount ladder is another good option to consider if you're going to be frequently going up and down to access storage on top of a roof or roof rack. This is from a Lumines or side mount ladder and that first step height is really low down and makes it really easy to get up and down to your rack. Making sure you get your roof right the first time on your build is really critical. There's a lot of penetrations and running electrical up to the top. So if you're considering doing rack lighting, racks, or awnings, all of that should really be done at the time of the build. And here's why. When we do a rack, it's a custom made rack. This one here is by a Lumines. It's their Touring 170 rack. And these are custom cutouts that are done around the fan and air conditioning unit. So doing those after the fact can be quite tricky, especially when we're talking about solar panel and lighting that's mounted to the rack itself. If you don't have the rack and then you want to add it later on, it may require removing components or even switching components out entirely because they're not going to be compatible with the rack. That is the case for the awnings. When you add an awning and you want a roof rack, we're gonna use the F45S from Fiamma. That's their wall mount version, and it bolts right to the side of the rack. If you don't do the rack, then the better unit for that application, if it's gonna be mounted directly to either the roof rails or directly to the roof of the vehicle, is the F80S. So all these components are really integrated, and it's crucial to make sure that you select each one specifically and make sure you consider if you're going to be adding different options in the future now this particular build we have our touring roof rack we have all of our lighting up front and you can see here we actually opted to go with 200 watt panels instead of our standard 330 watt and that's to make sure that we left all of this open decking up here to really make the most out of the roof rack on a 144 build if you stick with the 330 watt panel, it essentially takes up the entire roof space, especially if you're getting an air conditioning unit and or a fan. By switching to these two 100 watt panels, while it does reduce your overall solar, it really gives you a lot more usable space up here, whether you're accessing storage or you're gonna to be towing rafts or kayaks around. 
So it's a great option to switch these out, move them up here tight around the side of the fan and open up a little bit more space for all of your stargazing and storage needs. All right, while we're on the roof rack, you've probably been wondering what this giant can thing is here sticking up. And this is a cell booster. Cell boosters are going to give you a better range for your cell phone by adding an antenna, which this is here on the top of your vehicle. This one is one of the longest range antennas and that's why it's so tall. It is pretty flexible, so it will bend all out of the way if you do happen to find a branch or something with it. So don't have to worry about that. Inside the vehicle, there's another antenna that re will repeat and boost your signal from your cell phone. So what that's gonna do is going to eliminate some of those dead spots. So when you're going down the road and you're talking on the phone and you drop a call or you lose connection temporarily, a cell booster is going to do a, a pretty good job of eliminating those altogether. And it's also gonna give you much better reception in areas where you have zero or even one bars. Now, it doesn't make a signal out of nothing. There has to be a cell tower for it to connect to. But if normally in some area you're gonna have one bar, you may get up to even three, four bars by having this cell booster. Now this cell booster has one of the longest range. So whether you're gonna be working remotely and or just need that sort of connectivity with your phone, definitely worth considering a cell booster option. All right, I know we've been spending a lot of time on the outside of the vehicle, but I promise the inside's just as cool. Let's check it out. Up in the front of the vehicle, we upgraded this with our premium sound system. The factory system from Mercedes leaves a lot to be wanting. And so for this build, we've replaced all the front speakers with some Alpine R's. We've added a eight inch subwoofer behind the driver's seat and added Alpine speakers in the rear. This really improves the sound quality in the van and gives you some really good listening to bump those tunes. Now with all this invested in this vehicle, it's worth keeping it safe. So on this rig, we've also added a full security system. This includes motion alarm and GPS tracking to make sure you keep your investment safe and always know where your vehicle is at. Moving on to the rest of the vehicle, you can see we got seats. This van right now is set up to carry seven passengers, but we actually have the ability to add another two person bench for a total of nine person capacity. Now, sleeping nine in here is not really a possibility, but our vans are designed to be used in lots of different scenarios. So whether you're just toting family around for the weekend or you're heading out on a long trip with just two people, with our plug and play componentry, you can dial it in for whatever you need. The one thing you must select during your build out is the flooring. This is our excursion floor, which includes two sets of L-Track up front and another set of L-Track by the bed between the wheel wells that'll allow you to mount seats in all of those locations. Now we have four different floor options you can select from. Our base package includes only two sets of cargo L-Track in the back underneath the bed. Then we have our utility floor, which is gonna add these two sets of track up in the front of the vehicle. So now you can mount either a captain's chair or two person bench seat. Our adventure floor adds another set of tracks on the driver's side where our two-person bench seat is mounted right now. And then our excursion, again, which this van has, adds, takes away one of those pieces in the back under the bed and adds two more parallel pieces, which again, will allow you to add another seat in the back for a total of nine-person capacity in a 170 van. In a 144, you can fit up to six people. And again, with the plug and play, you can interchange them or mix and match, have two captain's chairs up front, three captain's chairs to make it really nice and comfy, really whatever your needs are to make sure that you can carry who you need when you need it. Now with all these seats, it's important to have some good table options. This is our marine table upgrade and it attaches to the vehicle with a receptacle that's permanently installed in the floor. And then we have the tabletop itself and the leg, which are each independent components. When not in use, this pops out really easily and will store right alongside of the galley. This isn't one of our upgrade options, the kitchen unit itself. And so if you decide not to get the galley, then this table would store right up against the wall and you can strap it to some of the L-Track that's stored there. We actually have two locations for this table in this build. We did one back here for this rear seat option, but you can simply 
take this pole out and move it up into the front receptacle as well, which is identical. So it makes it really easy to mix and match and make sure you put the table wherever you're gonna be hanging out and eating. I'm not gonna go into detail about all of our cabinetry, but just wanted to point out some of the upgrades that were installed in this van. We have our galley unit down below here, which includes the cooktop, fridge, sink, and a lot of nice storage down below. Up top here, we have our microwave overhead cabinet. So this includes some really nice storage beside, but also re replaces one of the doors. So you do have the option to either have a two door overhead cabinet. And then once you select the microwave overhead cabinet, we lose a door and it adds the microwave up top here. And this is a nice little guy, really great for heating things up. Really nice to have a microwave in a van. So you don't have to bust out all your pots and pans just to like reheat that coffee or warm up some food for the kids. Behind me is our shelf cabinet, and this is our two bin shelf cabinet. These are all removable plug and play components, so you can add these during your build or even come back and have them added in the future. They just use star knobs, so they come in and out in seconds, so you can really mix and match or upgrade as you go. So with so many passengers, definitely wanna be able to sleep some additional people in this van, and that's where our two tier bed system comes in. We have our bi-slide bed up top, we have our second tier bed platform down below. What's really nice about this is it still gives you some really great storage underneath the bed so that you can have skis, duffel bags, or whatever down below while still giving that second sleeping option. So you don't have to pull things out or rearrange just to have that second bed. Now you can also pair this with a slide out tray that goes underneath this lower bed platform to make it even easier to get access to that gear that may be stored down below. That slide out tray integrates right into the L track in the back of the van and slides out 60 inches out the back doors so you can grab your gear, get what you need, and then stow it right underneath this guy. Now, obviously, once you add the second tier, it's going to negate the possibility of having your bikes inside underneath the bed. So that's why we have the rear bike storage on that B2 on the back doors. So there's options, you can pop this out, it is fully removable. We'll go into that in more detail. First, we'll get this classic bi-slide bed out of the way so you can get a better view of underneath. With the bi-slide out of the way, get a little bit of better view of the space underneath here in the second bed. So it is tight underneath here, but it's definitely enough space when you slide underneath. Even if you're a side sleeper, you'll have plenty of room to be able to kind of cozy up underneath here. And it's really going to be great for kids if you're going to have some additional people sleeping inside. When that by slide is pushed all the way, you can flip around as well, have your heads towards this side might feel a little bit more spacious that way as well. Although it's also a lower bed platform, we wanted to try and make it multifunctional. So it is fully removable. So we have these pins here in the side, which will allow you to unclip it and fully remove each decking section. And if you want to leave it in and have some additional seating or hangout area, especially if you're not going to have this back seat back here, you can convert this into a little couch by pulling this guy up. Tighten it down the straps. And now we got a nice little hangout spot in the back of the van. And people can be hanging out in the front. Really creates some kind of multi-dimensional space in here and gives you different options for hanging out, especially when the weather gets nasty outside. All right, thanks for watching everybody. There is so much on this build that we didn't even get to. We got bug nuts and side steps, all sorts of things. Way too much to cover in this one video. So if you want to hear more, hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss anything and check out some of our other YouTube videos. Also, look us up at titanvans.com where we have lots more info on this build and others. Now, we got this storm coming, so we're gonna hit the road. We'll catch you next time.